Hi gang! In my other video I showed how to make a solar cell using a single power transistor. Now I've combined five of them together into sort of a solar panel to power a calculator. Here are the details. Enjoy! For the construction of the solar panel I first cut out a piece of plastic, a so-called circuit board. I hot glued the transistors into place and added nuts with washers and bolts for connecting wires to the transistor's collectors. Next I did the wiring. Okay, so here's the small 1.5 volt calculator that I picked up to test all this. And uh, funny enough, there are some solar cells right here. But if you look in the back, right here where the solar cell is, um, there are no connections to it. In fact, even though there's plenty of light here, you know, I can tur try to turn this on all I want. It's Nothing's going to happen. Um, so I've soldered some wires to where the battery went. And um, I'll just put the case on and try it out. Okay, it's all reassembled here, and if I try pushing the on button, nothing happens because there's no battery inside and the solar cell is not connected to anything. And if I hook up the battery here, and then I turn it on, and sure enough it comes on, off, on, and if I just snatch away the battery, then it uh, automatically turns off. Okay, so here's the finished unit. I'll show you the wiring in the back. Now I've connected all the transistors in series, that way the voltages add up to get my 1.5 volts uh, under reasonable lighting conditions. So here's the positive from the calculator, and I've added a bolt here just to act as a connection point. That goes to the base of this transistor, then from the collector of the same transistor I go to the base of this transistor, then collector to base, collector to base, collector to base to collector, and then that's the negative for the calculator. Why did I connect to just the base and collector for each transistor and ignore the emitter? Well, as I showed in my previous video, I did tests of the various possible wiring combinations, and using just the base and collector gave the best results. I again confirmed this with a few more transistors and got the same results. Note that this was tested using just two cool white compact fluorescent light bulbs, not sunlight. But then this calculator is for indoor use anyway. So here we go, all wired up. I put some duct tape on this uh, solar cell here that wasn't even attached to anything in the first place, but just to prove that that's not what's powering it, it's this that's powering it. So I've got a window here uh, coming through, sunlight coming through fly screen. I'll just turn it on. Voila! So it works great. Off, on. <laughs> Wonderful little thing. So here I am in the office, and down here is the calculator. Now there's not enough light to turn it on, so I'll just lower the lamp a bit. And then voila, it turns on. Works very well. Now if I want to be able to have it work with the lamp up here or something like that, then it's not more voltage I need. I've got all the voltage I need. Um, what I need to do is add another second set of five transistors in parallel. In parallel, the current adds. It's basically the current I'm missing. But hey, it works quite well as is. Oh, and you probably just noticed that even though the lamp was up, it still said 33 on it. Um, but I, I can't turn it back on. <laughs> yeah, well, sort of, but it's messed up. So I definitely need to lower that lamp. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure and check out my YouTube channel, Rimstar.org, for more videos like this. That includes the video I kept mentioning containing details of opening up the transistor and testing it for making a single solar cell. There's also a video all about making a solar cell from a sheet of copper, and there are many other similar solar videos, including one that includes a tour of a solar power system I helped install for an off-grid house. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!